If I was to ask 100 people in the bike industry to name the most cost-effective upgrade for your mountain bike, I bet the top answer would be tires. But if I was to ask 100 riders what the most confusing component to upgrade is, I bet the top answer would also be tires. And that's why I've come to Bike Park Wales here today with James from WTB to try and cut through some of the confusion and help you make a more informed buying choice. So James, there is a hell of a lot going on with tires in terms of tech. And if you start researching, it's easy to get even more confused than you were at the start, isn't it? You're right, with tires, you can go real deep into the tech, you know? Um, but what we try to do with our whole tire range is keep it, keep it as simple as possible for, for people to go out and choose the best tires for them. So with casings, say what you see, it's, uh, it's tough or it's light. Yeah. Tough is obviously heavier, thicker, yeah. light, a little bit obviously thinner. Um, yeah, there's yeah. going to be positives for both. Yeah. Uh, and then with compounds, high grip or fast rolling. So Easy. yeah, as Easy. simple as possible yeah, for the end consumer yeah. to, to choose what they want. As a consumer coming into making a, a choice about what tire to run, what are the, the, the main aspects that I, that I need to look at and, and make a decision about? Uh, so I'd say it's kind of three, three different things. So you've got your casing. Um, with the casing, depending on what you choose, for us, it's tough or for light, um, you're gonna get ride, ride feel from that, but also puncture protection levels. So obviously a tougher tire is gonna be, give you more puncture protection. A lighter tire, not as much puncture protection, but a different, uh, different feel when you're riding the bike. Um, with, your, with your compounds, so high grip or fast rolling, uh, as, they, as it says, high grip is gonna be a little bit more sticky. Fast rolling will be a bit more efficient, less of a drag, but obviously you're not gonna grip as well or you know, you're not gonna find as much yeah. traction with a fast rolling tire. So yeah. Uh, yeah, you can use a combination of both on your bike. You can use high grip front and back. Um, again, it's down to what, where you're gonna be riding, the type of riding you're gonna be doing. Um, and then the last, last thing to talk about is obviously the tread pattern. Uh, visually, you know, you can look at a tire and see if the treads are spaced further apart. It's probably gonna be better in something loose where the tread can like bite into a loose surface or mud or something like that. If tread is tightly packed, generally it's gonna be fast rolling, nice and efficient, but it's not quite gonna bite in loose terrain as much. So yeah. again, another compromise down to, you know, what, what you want from your tire choice. You've got a very aggressive tire here, the, the Verdict. Mm -hmm. um, so all, every time the, the tire rolls between these knobs, it's, it's basically hooking up and, and losing a bit of speed, isn't it? If you're on a smooth surface, yeah. but then when it gets into that loose dirt, each one of those is gonna penetrate into the dirt isn't it yeah. and give you give you that edge grip or or braking grip yeah absolutely and also with with bigger spacing like we have on this verdict it also if you do go through some mud and it gets clogged in there the the, the tread pattern isn't grabbing onto the mud and holding it yeah. it'll shed it so you kind of need to go don't need to go quite as fast to clear your tread and keep it working as you're riding there's a lot going on with this tread pattern isn't there so can you can you talk through a couple of the aspects of you know the important aspects when you when you look at that with this verdict you've obviously got your center knobs there which when you're in a straight line that's what you're going to be uh, you know, going to yeah. be in contact with the ground moving out you've got the side knobs so when you lean in these are the things that are you know biting in and holding your line and the further you lean you know the more you're going to be relying on these so it's really important that your you know your tire choice on your the tread pattern you go for is going to be suitable for you know the trails you're going to be riding on. That's the tread pattern. But then if you look a little bit closer, you've got these uh, these grooves cut through the tread. Uh, so this is called siphon. Yeah. What that does is give you extra working edges. So rather than this big block, just having you know four edges yeah. on four corners, a cut down the middle gives you eight edges, eight corners. So every time that, uh, that, that bit of tread is touching the floor, it's kind of working around, trying to bite as much as it can. More edges, more grip, and you know we've got that all the way around. The Verdict is a front-specific tire, so all of the siping is running with direction of travel. Yep. Um, so it's the, the, the idea there is all of your working edges are gonna be uh, most efficient while you're, while you're moving forward, not so much under braking. Yep. So then these ramps, I presume the ramp is to kind of uh, reduce some of the rolling resistance as it contacts the ground. It's gonna like gradually lift onto the tread. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, if you, like, like you said, you know, it does, 
it makes it a lot more efficient having these ramps. So you're getting up onto the knob rather than one knob squashing, then you're lifting it a square every edge time. Your, yeah. So if we if we switch to a um, rear tire, which luckily we have one here yeah. as well, uh, like we can see, we've got the ramps here, but then uh, here we've got. I presume this is like a braking edge, is it? Yes. Uh, so this 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 combo here is is you know it's it's our most aggressive you know enduro. Uh, mounting combo. They do share some similarities, but like you said, braking edges, I kind of see these as like paddles. So they will grab on and help you, you know, it's, you don't normally struggle when braking with the front, with the front, you know, when you're loading the front, so yeah. your front tires gripping loads when you're, when you're using your brakes. It's the rear that kind of goes light. So the more the tread can influence grip under braking, you know, the, the, the better, it's, better job it's going to do for you. So yeah, through the center, you can see on this, a rear tire, real big ramps to get you up onto the tread, but on the backside, as big a paddles as possible, just for, you know, maximum braking force. Yeah. We covered a bit about tread pans. So we, we talk a little bit about the rubber compound itself and the, you know, there's most tires that have like a multiple compounds, don't they? So how does that work? Yeah, so all of our, all of our mountain tires, we, we call it Tritec. Um, the way this works is we've got three different levels of rubber within each tire. One of them, you'll never see it, it'll never touch the floor, it's the casing, it's the support. So that runs from bead to bead, gives you the stability, um, it's the firmest compound of rubber that we use, and it runs up into the knobs, which helps the knobs stay stable. So when you're leaning onto them, they're not flopping over, yeah. they're giving you as much support as possible. But that rubber never touches the floor. Yeah. On top of that, we actually have two separate compounds, two separate durometer levels of rubber. So in the center, we use the, the firmer rubber. Um, it's still pretty sticky on a high grip tire, but then we have an even stickier rubber on the edges. So a little bit firmer in the middle, yeah. even, more, uh, even more pliable, soft on the sides when you're really leaning. And I mean, when you're banking the, banking the bike over, you're, you know, at some points you're only gonna be touching this. You yeah. really want that to give you maximum grip. There is a compromise with, um, with tire wear. So if you've got like super sticky rubber the whole way around, the softer the rubber like that is gonna wear a little bit faster, mm. but also it's gonna drag. So it's kind of uh, using the rubber as best we can across the tread to, to kind of highlight the, the I guess the, the riding properties you want where they're needed. So when we look at your uh, fast rolling and high grip options in terms of compounds, they're both still triple compounds, aren't they? Yes. Uh, so actually, the I mean, the casing, the, the structure of the tire is the same on both. It's that hard compound to give you as much support as possible. So when we're talking about the high grip compound, it is still a little bit harder in the center and stickier on the edges, but not quite as hard or as as firm as a fast rolling compound is going to be in the center and then sure. again a little bit softer in the edges yeah the most important thing for riders is to work out where their priorities are because it, from talking to you there every choice you make there's a compromise isn't there mm -hmm. so if you go for the stickiest grippiest compound you're going to have a bike that rolls slower or you're going to have to put more effort into pedaling up the hill if you go for a uh, the most strongest casing the toughest casing you're not maybe going to get a supple a response of the tire on on small bumps and stuff but you'll get loads of support in berms and stuff if you're loading it up yeah and then if you go for a really blocky aggressive tread pattern like these you know it's going to be great in dirt and loam and stuff like that but if you're riding super groomed trail center single track it's going to be a bit slow rolling so Whenever you, you make a tire choice, you've got to work out, okay, what what are my priorities? What am I willing to sacrifice? Does that, does that sound uh, about yeah. right? My first, first port call there would be, what tread pattern suits me? And once I've, once I've chosen, okay, that's the f kind of the front I like, that's the rear that'll work for me. Within that, then you can go, okay, so casings, do I want something, do I want maximum puncture protection? go down that route. Oh, I'm not too worried where I live. Maybe it's not too rocky, so I don't need the full puncher protection. Um, I can go for something a bit lighter, a bit more responsive. Um, so down to casings. And then with compounds, generally our front tires are going to be high grip because the front is where you want to, you know, do all the steering. You want, you want your front to hold on. So 
generally for us, front tires are going to be high grip. And then rears, you'll have an option. Um, whether you want it fast rolling and you're doing a lot of pedaling or whether you just want maximum grip and you just, you know, you don't mind a little bit more drag on the climb because you, yeah. when you hit the descent, yeah. you've got full confidence. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's kind of the, the pattern I would okay. follow. Yep. Yeah, um, that makes sense. How would you describe your kind of riding style and what uh, type of riding you do? I, I like, honestly, a bit of everything. I love laps at Bike Park Wales. I love laps at our local, uh, you know, hand cut steeper tracks. Which this is South Wales trails. South yeah. Wales trails, yeah. Um, I also love big rides in the Brecon Beacons, you yeah. know, big days in the mountains. Big epic, um, uh, natural stuff, yeah. Yeah, but I don't like changing tyres all the time for going. I mean, who does? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, if I'm deciding to go to the Beacons, I'll still run my all rounder tyre choice. Yeah. I might adjust pressures, but you know, I've got a go to my staple choice, um, which is this here. So you're kind of trail slash enduro sort of rider, yeah. aren't you? And, and yeah. We'll point out you're on an e-bike as well, which which influences to a degree what you choose as well, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Um, on an e-bike, you don't have to worry about rolling resistance so much. So you can get away with a higher grip front and rear and uh, a tread pattern that isn't quite as consistent in the center. So, because you're not worried about drag. You are worried about range though. But, you are. <laughs> so again, we go back to compromises and priorities. Yeah, yeah, we? yeah, yeah, exactly that, yeah. I mean, if I put, uh, kind of a tight small block on the back, I probably would get more range out of it, but then I wouldn't enjoy the descents as much. Mm. Um, you know, I ride, I ride my e-bike, I love going down hills, yeah. so that's the most enjoyment. I tailor my tyre choice and setup to the part I enjoy the most, and then, you know, I just get up the hill yeah. any way I can, and then, yeah, enjoy I the downs. I think that's good advice, you know, I, th I think uh, you want to, Make sure your tires work for the the ninety percent of the riding you do, and what really really gets you you going and gets your juices flowing, doesn't it? Yeah, we ride our bikes to have fun, so make yeah. that fun part as as good as it can be. Yeah, and then you know, uphill. I mean, some people love riding uphill, but yep. <laughs> for you know, for for most you know enduro trail riders, it's kind of the down is where you get the buzz. So the the more you can emphasize that, like the better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you're you've, you're running an aggressive set of tires. What, what are the casing and compounds you're running? Uh, well, on, on my e-bike, yeah. um, I'm actually tough casing front and rear. Um, e-bike's a little bit heavier, so when you're hitting rocks, it, it does put a little bit more force through it. Yeah. But also, I'm a, I'm a, I like to run quite low pressures, um, so you can get away with low pressures when you've got a tougher casing. Um, on my on my non e-bike, I actually run the same rear. Uh, but on the front, I'll go to a light casing. It's a little bit more agile. The bike feels a little bit nicer, but also you, you know, you're taking off probably 10 kilograms of the bike weight. Yeah. So you don't need that extra bit of puncture protection. Yeah. Um, yeah. So no, I mean, <laughs> you brought in another element here, which which is pressures. Yeah. You know, we we could we could do a whole video on pressures probably, but you know that it's a system. Tire is a system. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's the first part of your suspension on your bike, isn't yeah. it as well? And and. Uh, Pressures make a huge difference to the ride of the bike. And once again, it's a compromise, isn't it? So you, you know, you give and take with pressures, don't you? So what do you, what do you run on the pressure uh, So my standard setup on my e-bike, pretty low for some people. Um, I'm 24 to 24 and a half PSI in the rear and 18 to 18 and a half in the front. That's why I'm gonna choose tough casing because yeah. the tough casing gives the extra, extra support that extra PSI would give you. But then when it comes to straight line, like you said, your tire is a part of your suspension and it does take away, lower pressures do, does take away that small bump mm. and it, it feels really nice. You know, yep. that to me, the way that feels um, is worth, you know, uh, cornering maybe a little bit differently because I've got tires that aren't quite as firm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the overall feel of the bike, I like to, you know, take away the small bump with my tires and I know where I am. Yeah. We were talking yesterday about this, weren't we? You, you kind of want to um, make a tire that, that masks your deficiencies in your riding, isn't it? The, the yeah. thing, the, your weaknesses, <laughs> it sort of uh, eliminates your weaknesses a bit, doesn't it? Yeah. So in South Wales, we have a lot of, a lot of tracks. Like, I mean, our valleys are real steep. So a lot of the tracks go downhill real steep. Lots of routes along the way and things. And in the winter, especially when you're dropping into one of those and you think, okay, the next two or three corners, I'm not going to be able to stop. So for me, that's the scary part. So while I like, I set my bike up so I can deal with that scary part, make it as, as not scary as possible. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the trail, you know, I just don't hit rocks as hard because I know, okay, my bike's good for the, for the, the hardest part. 
yeah. and I'll, I'll just be a bit more chill on the on the rough stuff. We were riding yesterday uh, with with our setups, and you might go from one corner to the next. You might want to change your tire pressure, or your tread, or your compound yeah. or casing, and that, obviously you can't do that. So you're looking at some the tire and setup that is the best compromise over the whole trail, over the whole ride, over the whole you know year of riding or in some cases yeah uh, it's, it's it's difficult isn't it yeah but yeah yeah exactly and like you said experiment with pressures is you know it's that doesn't cost anything it's a little bit of time and it's a real if you've got a trail like you know um, maybe there's no like real dangers of like sharp edge rocks and stuff so you can really play with pressures um see d do that see what it feels like and like I'm, some people might be quite surprised how much more grip and comfort dropping your pressures a little bit will actually give you. I think, uh, you know, we, we've talked a bit about your choices. Uh, we've got some special guests here with us as well, haven't we? So I think it'd be really interesting to bring those guys in and mm. maybe talk about their choices and preferences because I, I think they're quite radically different almost to, to yours in some, some respects as well. So yeah, cool. Thank you, James. Yeah, no worries. So our first special guest, Mark Beaumont. He is World Cup downhill winner in the past. Super fast, enduro rider kind of now, maybe. What would you, how would you describe your, what you ride now? Um, I kind of like pick and choose and yeah. try and keep it fun. Um, enduro has been something that I was always kind of interested in when I was racing downhill. So yeah, just mainly here in the UK and uh, still have a lot of fun riding my bike. But always about speed i think isn't it a little bit yeah i i struggle to like remove that racer side from me and if you ask me to go slow and kind of look try and look cool it'd probably go bad so <laughs> if i just stick to going fast yeah. i'm probably safer that's cool what would you look for in a, in a tire setup what are your kind of priorities um i think like from a from a general like with that said trying to ride fast i want as much traction as i can but I don't want to compromise on like rolling speed because obviously there's a lot of straights. You need to be able to roll, um, which is kind of sort of emulated in my setup that I have on my bike. Okay, so that, that's interesting because I would have, as an outsider looking in, I would thought, oh, with you know, downhill background, you're going to prioritize traction over rolling speed. But that's, so that's really interesting that you say that. So we're talking about your enduro bike here, aren't we? Yes. Which is a bike you ride the most, is it? Yeah, like this is my like 160, 170 bike, uh, enduro race bike. So I have a um, verdict uh, on the front. It's got really strong side knobs so I can get a really good edge and it makes me feel secure on the front end. I'm not so worried about what the rear end is doing. I can control that with my hips and my legs. Um, so yeah, loads of traction on the front. It's actually a light casing. That's so interesting as well, yeah. I find I have a bit more feel like I can feel the ground uh, and, the, and the tire will deform a little bit, a, a bit more supple. Yep. Uh, and then on the back, uh, I have a Trail Boss. Um, this is a, a tough, um, fast rolling. And that gives me a bit of security for not uh, having issues with punches. Yep. But also it's, it's fast rolling tire. So it accelerates well and also carries speed really well. Yeah, again, that's, that's really interesting. It's almost contrary to, to what I would have imagine coming into this that you would run so you're basically managing the grip by you know your technique through your technique you're pushing for grip everywhere and, and finding the right places for grip uh, and you're, you're you know you're sacrificing some of the mechanical grip that you might get from the the tires or the rear tire especially yeah. um, because you know that you have got that technique that you can use to, to find it yourself yeah that's you know that's basically it and like we're lucky enough to be in British summertime, so we've rode in the dry today. I mean, if it get if it gets wet and slippery, I'd kind of find that my skills kind of can't manage it so well. So I'd have to go for a more aggressive rear yeah. tire in, in those conditions. But as a as a basis summer setup, I find this really good. Yeah, yeah, um, and you know some some super fast riders want to look for a lot of support in the in the casings as well but you you know you've got a light casing on the front and and you you don't have issues with that i guess it depends on the type of trail you're riding doesn't it it's, as well yeah it, it does depend a lot on on what sort of terrain we're, we're riding on and and sort of you have to kind of pick your 
pick your places and try and pick smooth lines and and and, and be smart basically you know uh, i had a, a mechanic many years ago when i was young and he told me that if i got a puncture it was rider error yeah i i like the light tire i like yeah. the feeling i like to have more feeling and and on, on the front end especially because yeah. yeah, cool. um if you've lost that you're usually in trouble it's the priority isn't it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and then look, what about tyre pressures? Um, what do you run? Um, so riding 29, I, my, now my pressures are changed a little bit. I would say a little bit softer than I was in on previous uh, wheel sizes. So I have uh, 24 PSI in the front and 28 PSI in the rear. Yeah, that's, uh, hard, that's hard in the back, yeah. And I don't, I don't, I don't mess with them. Yeah. I just find that like I'm pretty safe and I know that it's like I've got a good amount of traction. And I, and I don't have issues. Uh, even if it was wet, I would run the same pressure. Uh, I don't like to risk too much. On so the 28 PSI is basically just so you don't flat, isn't it? Is, is it the main reason? Or? Yeah, yeah. like with, if I went to 30, you get an element of deflection. So the tire won't, won't squish under load or you know, a, a root or a rock. You need it to deform a little bit to give you to keep the bike yeah. keeps the bike planted and yeah. the bike doesn't do this and you know you can get way more complex with that with yeah. suspension and so on and yeah. so forth but basically is i find if i go too high uh it, it'll deflect a little bit and i don't really like that sensation so yeah. um, that's the compromise it's always a compromise i think we've been finding out that more and more yeah exactly um and it's about yeah working out what works for you you've had a, a lot many years of experience to to settle on these uh these tire treads and casings and pressures and stuff haven't you yeah yeah definitely and it and it's an evolving process you know there'll be when somebody will say oh try this or try this and you have a little go and you you draw a conclusion from that so i like that it's like an evolving process and you don't necessarily know it all so yeah um, well that's brilliant thank you thanks for uh give, passing on that that insight and uh it's really really interesting to to find out uh, a different approach to to tire choice and, and uh, pressures and stuff. That's yeah. cool. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. So our second guest we've got with us is Nicky Wiles. Nicky is just an awesome, skillful, all-round rider, like jibbing, massive jumps, trials he moves. Oh, you're and too he, kind. I know. <laughs> and he's not only good at riding trails, he's builds them as well I'm about about that so do it all yeah <laughs> <laughs> Nikki good to have you um thank you you know what do you look for in your tire choice uh lots of grip yeah uh good feel um so yeah I've gone for light front and back you ride I guess a lot of bike park trails where there's gr like groomed lots of support and you're you're really pushing hard into turns, pushing hard into lips. Is that fair to say? Yeah, that's fair to say. I'd say I ride more more bike park stuff than than, than natural yeah. at the minute anyway. Yeah. Okay, so that, that must influence your choice of tire then, yeah? Yeah, um, also my pressures as well. Yeah, you know. what are the ones you're running? Vigilante front, uh, trail boss rear, and both uh, light casing front, front and back. That's interesting. Again, I would have thought you want all that support when you're, you know, because you're really, putting pressure through the bike, the suspension and the tires when you're loading up on a jump that you'd want like tough casings, um, but you've gone for light ones. That's interesting. Yeah, I just, I like to be sort of playful on the bike and, you know, light, I guess. So yeah, yeah that's, I've matched up with the, with the tires. Okay. And again, you've got quite, quite kind of fast rolling tread patterns. I guess that's helps with speed through, through jumps and stuff and yeah yeah um i guess with this style of riding you want fast rolling tires so yeah these these are perfect for that not too much uh you know chunkiness on on the tread and what compound uh, have you gone for high grip on the front so a little bit softer and then fast rolling on the rear that um, makes sense yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. yeah i wouldn't wouldn't fancy having too hard a tire on the front you know that's where you want all your grip and all your feel we've got one kind of consensus among all of us so far today is that everyone wants lots of grip on the front so yeah. you know that's that's one thing I mean, that we who, want to take on. I, I know us, yeah. yeah it's almost like the, the rear you you can let do yeah. what it wants dance around and it will follow the front won't it so yeah that's get, where all your all your trust and support is going yeah. in the front yeah um, we also we need to talk about pressures so what, what do you look at uh, in terms of that um i like my rear on the harder side 
Um, if I'm riding bike park, I would go harder than if I was doing more natural trails. So more like 30 PSI, um, especially in the summer when it's super dry. I mean, you can lower them a little bit in, in the wet, but um, in current conditions, yeah, I'd say 30 is my preferred tire choice. That's high. So is that, again, mostly because you want the tire not to squirm or is it because you're worried about punctures? Um, I would say more the, sque uh, the squirming, yeah. 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 You want the bike to be consistent as you load it up. You don't yeah, want it to especially go. on the jumps and, yeah. and the booms. Um, punctures, I try to, you know, touch wood. I don't get too many punctures. I try and be lighter on the bike to mm. sort of, you know, save my tires and wheels. Yeah. It's more the pressure is more to do with the f more the feel of the bike rather yeah. than yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, looking out for punctures. That makes sense. And then up front, sorry. Uh, that's... 25, 24 okay. up the front. Again, we've got totally different kind of uh, choices and um, compromises and you guys are all riding fast. You know, you used to race as well, didn't you? You raced down yeah. here and stuff. So there's, uh, it just shows that there's so many different ways of skinning a cat really. And it's very, very personal, I would say, you know, pressures. Um, I think I've been running similar pressures for a long time, you know, when I was racing. They've always been around that. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Nikki. Hey, That's no fascinating. Worries. Thank you. And um, yeah, we'll see you soon. So I think it's been really enlightening today to find out what various types of riders use on their bike in terms of tire choices. And the fact that it can be so different that there isn't a right and a wrong answer for everyone. It's about experimenting, about trying things out, about prioritizing what works for you. And hopefully we've given some insight that will help you make a better choice. Um, but go away, try some different pressures in your tires, have a think about what's important to you when you're out riding. And that will really help when it comes to choosing the next set of tires.